Jessica Plavicki brings an artist's eye to understanding how dioxin pollution affects young fish. These are a bit more exciting than bar grass. And I feel like it's actually a great way to engage people um, and someone sees a brightly colored picture, they're interested, you start talking about the research. Plavicki's images show how dioxin interferes with the development of a young fish's heart. I think people don't, you know, always get an opportunity to look at how beautiful something is under a microscope, how much detail is not, like, immediately present to you because you can't see it with your naked eye. Plavicki is working with Dr. Warren Heidemann on a project funded by Wisconsin Sea Grant. They found that dioxin interferes with a layer of cells surrounding a fish's heart. It's called the epicardium. And what we're finding is that if dioxin is present in those fish prior to the formation of that, that little mass of cells, they never show up. And what they're supposed to do is climb across onto the heart and spread out over the heart to form the epicardium. And then that will in turn form other layers and other parts of the heart and that just never happens. Heidemann's team is also examining evidence that young fish exposed to very low levels of dioxin can suffer sex changes and when they become adults, deformed spines. Heidemann says the consequences could be severe. We are worried about wiping out populations and um, fish with reproductive incapacity don't reproduce and so you don't get recruitment of new young and suddenly the fish are gone and we see this worldwide in, in different populations. A lot of times it's overfishing but how do we know which is overfishing and which is chemical and so we're trying to, to get data for that. The lab work may help identify those wild fish species that are at greatest risk. Well, by finding out these markers of toxicity in a zebrafish, wildlife biologists can go and sample the environment and find fish you know, that are naturally reproducing, get the embryos, and look to see, well, is the epicardium missing? Or we could develop in vitro assays in which they just look for key genes for epicardial development. And so they'll just grind up a few of the, the fish that they capture in the wild, put them into a, a machine and get a, a readout. And they'd say, okay, this fish is, is sensitive and this fish is not. This environment needs to be remediated. This environment doesn't. This research is brought to you by the University of Wisconsin Sea Grant Institute, science for the sustainable use of Wisconsin's Great Lakes resources.